A little over two years ago, Acura shocked the world when they reintroduced the Integra nameplate. This is a nameplate, remember, that has been gone from America for over 20 years. And thankfully, Acura borrowed a lot of componentry from the just introduced 11th generation Honda Civic. Now, when this car first came out, enthusiasts begged and pestered Acura for an even faster version. And thankfully, Acura has delivered with this, the first ever 2024 Integra Type S. It borrows all the performance goodies from the track-tuned Civic Type R, which means we have a standard six-speed manual transmission, the only manual in the segment, and we have a, a potent two-liter turbo under the hood, making 320 horsepower. Now, I already had a chance to drive this car out in San Francisco a couple months ago. However, this week, as you can see, Acura has loaned me this Apex Blue Pearl Integra Type S. We're gonna live with this car for a week. We're gonna put it through our usual battery of tests. At the end of this video, we're gonna see, has Acura managed to create a high-performance sport compact car that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with its all-wheel drive European rivals, stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling of the Type S, which I personally think this car is really good looking, this is the high performance Type S model. So I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. And now, if you guys are familiar with the just introduced Civic Type R, this essentially has the same powertrain with its own specific tune. Now underneath this red engine cover, which I love, it's kind of a nod to the um, 2001 Integra Type R. This is the company's pride and joy of, of turbocharged engines. It's a two liter turbo four cylinder, pumping up to 25 pounds of boost pressure through a twin scroll turbo design. It makes 320 horsepower. That's five more horsepower versus the Civic Type R. And it also makes the same torque at 310 pound feet. Acura says they achieved that increase in power by software changes and the engine has slightly more peak boost pressure versus the Civic Type R. It all goes out through a six-speed manual transmission, the only vehicle in the segment to offer a manual. There is no automatic or dual clutch available, and this vehicle is only front-wheel drive. It's also the only front-wheel drive competitor or offering in the segment. It does have a dual axis front suspension with a mechanical limited slip diff. It's gonna help put that power down. Acura doesn't quote a zero to 60 time. We got 5.4 seconds in our first test. We'll test it again out in our home area uh, without an extra passenger on board. This vehicle uh, should have a top speed of around 167 miles an hour. Uh, fuel economy is rated at 21 in the city, 28 on the highway. Premium gas is gonna be recommended for the best performance. It has a relatively small 12 and a half gallon gas tank. So you're not gonna be going very far in a full tank of fuel. As this vehicle sits, the curb weight is just over 3,200 pounds. It's about 30 pounds heavier versus a Civic Type R and about 150 pounds heavier versus an Integra A-Spec with a six-speed manual. Now, closing the hood, it is a pretty lightweight hood. Acura did use some aluminum in some of the components here. Uh, but as you can see, the styling of this vehicle essentially takes everything that we like about the regular Integra and turns the dial up to 11 or maybe even 12 because of the specific bodywork. I especially love the hood vent here, the functional heat extractor hood vent with the bulging hood. It definitely gives this car a high performance feel without being a little bit too boy racer. And then of course you have the usual Acura styling cues here. You have their frameless diamond pentagon grille with the open pore surface diamond pentagon that allows for again, more cooling to come into the engine. It's necessary to cool off that engine. You have a type S badging here. And then if you want Acura, will sell you an illuminated Acura logo and black out the badges for those of you who prefer. There's also some well-integrated parking sensors into the vehicle. And then all Integra Type S's will come standard with the company's full LED headlights with the chicane style LED daytime running light. It's got the four individual LEDs along with LED low and high beams, LED turn signals, no fog lights. Acura deletes the fog lights and instead installs a more aggressive front bumper with again, more of that open surface diamond pentagon that allows for more cooling and air to pass through. You can see you can the massive intercooler behind uh, there that again allows for cooling for this engine. It's gonna need it because this car, even though Acura doesn't build it as track capable, it certainly could do so because of its Type R roots. Now, moving around the side profile, the Integra Type S is also one of the bigger vehicles in the segment at 187 inches long. This is a full, uh, between two to seven and a half inches longer than its competitors from Mercedes, BMW, and Audi, of course. Compared to a Type R, this car is about uh, five inches longer overall. They ride on the same 107.7 inch long wheelbase. This car is also just under 75 inches wide. So this is three inches wider than the standard Integra. So it is definitely got that low and wide stance. Acura also lowered the suspension by an inch compared to the regular Integra. 
so it has around four inches of ground clearance. And then the wheels, uh, you can see these are exclusive to the Type, uh, the type S. They're a 19 inch shark gray five spoke wheel. Uh, on a Michelin Pilot Sport 4S summer tire. These are measuring 265 by 30 tires. So 30 millimeters fatter and the brakes, these are the same brakes from the Civic Type R. It's a 13.8 inch two piece vented uh, rotor with a four piston Brembo caliper that's also painted red. So serious brakes, uh, serious stopping power for a serious sports sedan. There's also a Type S badge. You can see the bulging fender flares here help to uh, create that wide look that you like along with uh, uh, giving you us, giving us enough clearance to fit those fatter tires. You can see the mirrors are integrated. They have integrated LED turn signals. I would like to see Acura offer like a black package where they black out the roof and black out the mirrors. You can get carbon fiber mirror caps from the dealer. You can also black out this type S badge over here. Uh, but then you can also see no chrome along the vehicle, which I prefer. And then the sad thing about the Type S, just like the Type R, Acura deletes the sunroof. This is the only Integra model in the US that doesn't have a sunroof, which I think is a mistake. Acura should have just kept the sunroof because uh, essentially you already have it on the A-spec. Why not just keep it there? You can see over here on the rear area, they also have this kind of flared out portion along with the flare out on the door. This is not as nicely integrated as what you find on the Civic Type R, however, but looking around the rear, this is where the Integra gives you more of a traditional sedan look, which some of you prefer, even though this is still a hatchback. There is no rear wiper back here, but my tester for 950 bucks has this dealer installed carbon fiber rear deck lid spoiler, which is a little bit bigger versus the regular black painted spoiler that comes standard. But again, it's got that more mature look versus a Type R instead of that having that big wing uh, for, or that big table on the back. You can see uh, the rear of this car, I personally think looks even better than the front. It's got the Type S badge, which again, you can black those out. It's got Integra stamped in the rear bumper, just like in the front. The taillights are full LED. Uh, which are pretty similar to the regular A-Spec Integra. It even has Acura in the actual taillight themselves. And then you can see the rear diffuser is just really aggressive. Love the way it looks. Again, I like the black accents for this vehicle. You can get a carbon fiber, uh, I think, a rear diffuser and front diffuser or front splitter if you'd like from the dealer. And then of course the triple exhaust, it's slightly different versus the triple exhaust in the Type R. Acura deletes the front resonator and they also do an active valve, but it also creates these lovely pops and bangs. So let's go ahead and fire it up so you can hear how it sounds. That's right, you're hearing those pops and bangs from an Integra. And even though it's not quite as uh, raw and loud as an Elantra N, it definitely is a huge improvement over the Civic Type R. Now, opening up the cargo area, you can see this is uh, a lift back, even though it looks like a sedan. Um, and you can see here, in terms of cargo space, Acura says you get around 24.3 cubic feet. And that's a pretty good amount. You will have to deal with the slightly higher uh, lift over to get into the cargo area. But you can see once you're in here, it's deep. It's very usable. Um, underneath here, there is no spare tire. Instead, you just get an air compressor with a fix a flat kit. You have a little bit of storage there. And you can also fold down those seats if you'd like. Although Acura doesn't quote the actual total storage when the seats are fold down, I would estimate it. It's probably a little over 40 cubic feet. So exterior wise, this is a very attractive looking vehicle, but let's go ahead and take a look at the interior and see some of the changes that Acura has made versus uh, its more plebeian Civic Type R cousin. But before we get inside, let me show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the current Acura key fob. It reminds you you have something special with a Type S logo on the back of the fob. It has your usual buttons for lock, unlock, op pop open the trunk, but it's not a power lift gate. And you also have a panic function. No remote start, obviously, because this is a manual only car, uh, but I do like the size of the fob. It also feels really heavy and sturdy. It feels like it's made from high quality materials. Now, as you approach the vehicle, you can see conventional door handles. There's a little ridge area here. If you touch that, that will lock the door for you. This, this car also has a smart auto lock away or auto lock walk away feature, where if I set the vehicle to basically lock the car automatically as I close the door with the fob on me and I walk away, that'll lock the doors. It doesn't have an auto, walk, auto unlock feature, but when you want to unlock the door, just touch the back of the door handles. I also wish Acura included power folding mirrors. That would have been a nice touch as well. Now my tester has the perfect color combination, the apex blue with the light orchid interior. It's got this ultra suede material with the leather two-tone look. It's definitely uh, a more aggressive looking seat versus the regular Integra. It also has Type S embossed on the headrest. 
These seats are more aggressively bolstered. However, they're not quite as aggressive as the Civic Type R, and I'm okay with that uh, because this is gonna be a more comfortable seat. They're also three level heated, and you get a 12-way power driver's seat uh, which means you get a four-way power lumbar. Now, unfortunately, the passenger seat is a manual. Uh, you get a power seat in the Integra A-Spec, and Acura has also removed the memory seat function. You can see there's the empty buttons for it. Not entirely sure why. They should have kept those features in, especially for the Ultimate Integra. Now, looking at the door panels, you can see it's got a lovely soft-touch injection molded plastic. It's got some silver-painted plastic trim here, padded area where your elbows are dressed. You also get the standard ELS Studio 3D 16-speaker surround sound audio, and it sounds great. For those of you who like the Bose system in the Type R, this sounds even better. Hard-touch plastic down here, but you have some storage cubbies. I also like the Type S side sill over there. Overall, it makes a great first impression and it definitely feels a little bit more premium versus a Civic Type R. Now getting inside, because this vehicle is an inch lower, you are kind of falling into the vehicle, but once you're in, it's a really comfortable place to spend time. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. And then of course you have the Acura exclusive chime with uh, the digital gauge cluster here, which is a 10.2 uh, inch. And then you have the nine inch display over here. Now, starting the vehicle up, the start stop button is where you'd expect it to be. It only comes with a manual. So you got to put the clutch in as you guys know. And then when you start the vehicle up, it doesn't really make much of a sound. Remember, this car has an active exhaust. You hear a slight burble from back there when it first starts up, but the magic happens as soon as you put the drive mode selector into its Sport Plus setting. That's where the uh, exhaust valves open up, and then you'll actually hear some bangs and pops from the exhaust. That is exclusive to the Type S. The Type R doesn't do that because the Type R is sold in other markets where that kind of sound would be considered juvenile, but because this car is exclusive to America, uh, the Acura team basically said from to Japan, we want more noise and more noise you shall get. Now looking at the rest of the interior, you can see this is where it's kind of similar to the Civic Type R, or the Civic Type R, especially when you look at the infotainment system. I wish Acura had done with a bigger screen here. This is a nine inch display. It's standard on the Type S. In terms of the materials, you have a soft touch injection molded dash material. This right here uh, is a different design versus the Civic where the Civic has a continuous looking air vent, but you do have this kind of high quality little uh, directional joystick where you can control the air, where the airflow is for the vents, which is nice. You get a five inch color or heads up display there, uh, which is exclusive to the Type S. Then you have a steering wheel here, which is the same steering wheel on the regular Integra, which again is a Civic steering wheel with an Acura logo on it. No paddles, obviously it's a manual only. Uh, you have a manual tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It's got a good amount of adjustability. You have your controls for volume and audio and then your adaptive cruise control. It doesn't have traffic jam assist or low speed follow, but you do get adaptive cruise. The horn sounds good. It doesn't sound puny like what you might hear in something like a GR Corolla. Um, but overall, the steering wheel feels nice in your hands. I would have liked to see a flat bottom design. No heated wheel as well. That's actually a dealer accessory for an additional 500 bucks. Um, but you can also get Alcantara. I much prefer the leather. It just has a high quality feel, so that's really nice. Uh, over here, you can see on the dash, there's this colored area here, uh, which is color matched to the interior. It's covered in the same high quality leather. It's not exposed stitching, but it does feel like the same material. So this is exclusive to the Type S compared to the regular Integra. And then there's a little bit of ambient lighting in the footwells and in the uh, uh, phone charger tray. And then there's also an LED ambient light going across the door panel. Although I'm surprised that Acura doesn't let you change the color. Uh, you can change the brightness intensity, but it would have been nice to see a little bit more intricate ambient lighting. Um, down over here, you can see uh, you have your wireless phone charging pad. My iPhone 14 Pro Max fits nicely. You have two USB-C or USB charging ports, a C and an A. You have a regular 12 volt power outlet. You have your drive mode selector here, which you can see this car offers four different modes. There's a comfort, a sport, and then a sport plus. And then if you push this button here, you'll activate the individual mode, which the individual you can push and hold. Uh, and you can also customize the setting where you can change the engine tune, the steering, the, the suspension, and the gauge cluster. Uh, there is no mode to adjust the active exhaust. It's linked to the engine response. So when it's in Sport Plus, that's when it's going to be in its loudest setting, and that's where it creates the pops and the bangs, which I love. But again, uh, that feature is a really nice 
thing to have. Acura basically says the Sport Plus setting is almost similar to the R Plus setting in the Type R. It's basically one notch below it. But again, this car's mission is designed to be a little bit more of a street car, a little bit easier as a daily, daily driver. Now put the vehicle in traverse. You can see there's the backup camera, which offers three different views. You have trajectory, you have front and rear parking sensors, no 360 camera. You can't get that on this car. Uh, some competitors do offer that feature. Your three level heated seats are here. You have dual zone climate control. Again, cooled seats would have been nice. There's already ventilation holes or perforation holes in the seats. A cooled seat function would have been a nice touch as well. Um, down over here, uh, you can see you have an electronic parking brake. So if you guys are trying to do those drift turns, unfortunately, you won't be able to do that. The shifter is lovely. I love the shift knob that Acura puts on this car. Instead of doing an all metal knob, they give you some leather here so it won't burn you when it's really hot or freeze your hand when you are driving this vehicle in cold weather. You can also change out the shifter to be completely metal, but I just love the way this feels. It just has surgical precision as it goes through the gates, the perfect feel as well. The clutch is also extremely extremely light uh, and it's really easy to drive this car even in bumper to bumper traffic. There's some piano black plastic trim here, cup holders, and then you have a padded center console area here. Open this up, you can see um, you have a pretty deep storage area, no power outlets in there. Uh, it's all gonna be located over here. The seats, like I mentioned earlier, are very comfortable and supportive. I drove this vehicle for five hours all day on a road trip and I basically felt comfortable when I got out of the car. Again, I just wished for a cooled function, especially in the warmer weather. Uh, the glove compartment you can see is damped, uh, but not lined with felt. It's a decent size. It could be a little bit larger. You have an auto dimming rear view mirror here. You have LED map lighting. And then as you can see, because there's no sunroof, uh, you do have more headroom space in this car, which is good if you plan to track it and you're taller and you need to put on a helmet. But again, a sunroof would have been a nice touch in here. But overall, the interior definitely still feels like a Civic at times, but it also is filled with high quality materials and switch gear. The tech in the car is decent, but Acura really missed the mark by not giving us memory seats, a power passenger seat, and cooled seats. Those are, those are touches that I think should have been included for an Acura, especially at this price point. Looking at the back seat of the Integra Type S, if you're comparing it to its European rivals, this is where the larger size of the Integra is going to benefit you because you get around three to four inches of additional legroom back here, which is gonna be great for those of you who are trying to sell this car to your spouse as a family vehicle. Uh, sadly, when you get back here, you do have harder plastic materials back here, so it's kind of a downgrade versus the front seats. There's a cheap plastic here that I don't love, uh, metal accented or silver painted accented door handle, which feels pretty high quality. You have a padded armrest here, which is nice. The windows are not auto up down in the rear, just in the front. I forgot to mention that earlier. So I would have liked to see Acura give you auto one touch for all four. Getting inside, you can see the roof line does require me to kind of duck my head. You can see as I get in, my head will hit the roof if I don't duck uh, because of that sloping roof line. But once I get in and shut the door, uh, you can see 37 and a half inches of legroom back here is actually among, it's literally the best in the segment. All the other competitors have like between 33, 34 inches of legroom. Surprise, there's a hump here because this vehicle is not all wheel drive. I don't know why there's a drive shaft hump here, which isn't great of Acura's uh, packaging, but you can see no rear seat air vents. You only have one storage cubby, no USB-C charging ports or USB charging ports, no heated rear seats. And then, like the Civic Type R, Acura has deleted the middle seat here. Uh, now, thankfully, you do still have the same Orchid material back here, but it would have been nice for Acura to at least include an armrest and keep the middle seat here, at least include air vents. Uh, it would have been a nice touch, especially considering this is an Acura. But overall, if you do want to use this for adults, the extra legroom certainly is welcome. The headroom once you're back here is also good for somebody my height because the sunroof doesn't take up space. But it is slightly a missed opportunity of Acura and the rear seat to kind of uh, not offer those features, especially when you can get all those you know touches that I'm talking about in something like a Volkswagen Golf R. So here we are back in the all new first ever Acura Integra Type S. When I first drove this car uh, back in San Francisco a little over two months ago, I was simply blown away with the entire package of this vehicle. So I've been looking forward to spending a full week with this and the Type R, which I should be getting shortly after this review, uh, review or the, after this loan. Um, so stay tuned for a full review on the Type R as well. Now, the Integra Type S essentially takes all the hardware, the good performance hardware from the Type R. It's essentially a Type R and a Tux, but Acura has also assured us that it has its own identity because they tuned it to be more of a street car. So let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. I think the last time I did this, I got 5.4 seconds with Rob in the car. Um, and let's see what we can do this time. I turned off the traction control, so it's reduced sitting. I have it in Sport Plus. This is a front wheel drive car, remember. It's got a limited slip diff, but it can be difficult to launch. 
and that was not good. So let's try that again, but not quite as hard of a launch. Five point seven there, so not great. I got five point four the first time, but the tires are struggling for grip. Um, I'm guessing because they're a little cold. The road is also slightly damp. I'll try it again up ahead and see if we can get a slightly quicker time. I think the quickest time I've seen with this car is like five point two seconds, um, which is fast. Don't get me wrong, but remember, you are limited by the grip of front wheel drive. The, the front tires are spinning for traction here. Uh, and that's kind of the downfall of this car is it's not built for zero to 60 times because of the lack of traction. Uh, I'm gonna try it here, except this time I'm gonna turn the traction control back on. Uh, and again, I'm gonna try to feather the, or I'm gonna try to be a little softer on the, uh, on the throttle because I don't want the wheel spin. It's what's gonna slow this car down. Point eight there. This is with it more going slightly uphill, and uh, this vehicle will hit 60 miles an hour in second gear. So remember, every time you shift, you're losing precious time off the zero to 60 time. Um, but again, the road is slightly damp. I'm hoping I can find a little bit of a drier road uh, down the road because the sun is out, but it rained last night. Uh, the tires are still kind of coming up to temperature. This vehicle, again, is difficult, tricky to launch because it'll bog if you don't, you know, get the engagement right. But I'm going to try my best to get the engagement right, hopefully at the next time. But when you're not trying to achieve the quickest zero to 60 times, this is where the Type S really shines because the steering in this car is so surgically sharp and quick. It's like razor quick. Uh, I mean, I've had a chance to spend some time in the GR Corolla and the Golf R, and then hopefully the, and then the Type R in the next couple of weeks, I'll have that for a week. But I have to say, this has the best steering, I think, in the segment. It's just so much feel, so much heft to it. It really just, the vehicle turns direction with so much authority. It feels like it's glued to the road. The suspension is also firm. Like I have it in a Sport Plus setting right now. This is with the suspension in its most aggressive setting. And the Type R, or the Type S definitely rides rough in this mode. I mean, it gives you the, the feel that you want from like basically a track car. I mean, I, I'm, I'm probably gonna call this thing a Type R a few times on accident because that's how good it feels. It literally feels like I'm driving a Type R, but I do love the look of this car a little bit more. And that's kind of the beauty about this vehicle. Put my foot down here, that limited slip diff should help put the power down. It does, but whew, so much wheel spin. <laughs> and I felt a little bit of torque steer there, but again, that's kind of normal considering uh, I turned the wheel and put my foot down. This is 310 pound feet of torque. It's a lot of power to just the front wheels. So it's only so much that a dual axis suspension and a limited slip diff can do before again, you're spinning out those tires. It's not gonna always be able to put the power down. So you kind of have to expect stuff like that. But overall, let's try it here one more time. This time I'm not gonna turn off the traction control. point two there there we go i knew i can get a better launch 5.2 is the quickest one of the quickest times i've seen from other publications in the type the type s so when you can get the launch right which takes some practice this vehicle is fast i mean that's a quick time for a front wheel drive manual transmission car uh, that has struggle or has trouble putting the power down remember i think my quickest time i got in a gr corolla with a very aggressive clutch dump was around 4.9 seconds so this vehicle <laughs> oh, that's so good. I love the way this car feels. Uh, the way the shifter feels, it's just surgically precise. The way the engine performs, um, it just has so much power. It loves to rev, it pulls hard all the way to that 7,000 RPM red line. And then the handling of this vehicle is just insane. It's just like literally on rails. It just, tur you turn into a corner and the whole car just literally just feels like it's glued to the road. It's fantastic. And the beauty about this car versus the Type R is the sound, the cracks, the pops, the bangs from the exhaust, which you can hear slightly. The, the exhaust is much louder when you have the windows down, obviously, but you do hear some of the pops. You just put your foot down and then you let off the throttle there. <laughs> That's nice. I mean, it's gonna be fun uh, to see what Type R owners do. They're probably gonna try to take the exhaust system from this car because it, remember, it deletes the front resonator and then Acura has tuned a software to 
create the pops and the bangs because it's unique to this, or the Integra Type S can do that because this car is only sold in North America versus other markets sometimes require you to not make all that kind of racket and noise, so. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> What's he doing? Going around? I guess he's <laughs> turning around. <laughs> oh, is that Jared? That is Jared. Jared. <laughs> what are you doing, Jared? <laughs> Jared. <laughs> oh my God. What is he doing? <laughs> I guess he's like. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> That's <him. laughs> oh, this car is really fun. Um, but let's go ahead and take it out of the. Are, are the Sport Plus mode. I'm gonna put it into individual. This is the mode that I custom tailored to my preference to where the engine is in Sport Plus, the steering is in Sport, and the adaptive dampers are in Comfort. This is the mode that I preferably dri daily drive this vehicle in because it kind of gives you that balance where the ride's not beating you up. The adaptive dampers do, do make a difference, uh, but let's go ahead and switch it over to full on Comfort mode. This is where the, the uh, exhaust valve will close, the engine will be in its Comfort setting for better fuel efficiency. The steering got considerably lighter. It's uh, Notch, it's a, a notch too light for my taste in this mode. Sport is kind of the ideal. Sport Plus is a little too heavy, but this is the mode that people are just gonna daily drive it. The pops and the bangs also stop. Uh, and I will say that I took this vehicle on a longer highway trip. I put about 250 miles on it in a day. Um, and I noticed that the ride quality and comfort, while it is usable in daily or as a daily driver when you hit some harder bumps it still does transmit a good amount of shock waves through the cabin and it there's it could use a little bit better rebound control now acura says they tuned this car to have better rebound control uh versus the type r which i'll drive the type r back to back very soon and we'll be able to comment on that because i do suspect this car's ride quality is softer than the type r's but for those of you who are coming from a luxury car you're still going to find this to be a rather harsh ride uh even in comfort mode over broken pavement. I mean, right now the pavement is really smooth, so it has a great ride quality. Uh, it also is relatively quiet in here. Uh, the sound insulation is a little bit more in this car. That's where the extra 100 or 30 pounds of weight comes from. It's just the sound insulation and the fact that this is a bigger car. The rev match also works really well. The clutch is easy to modulate. And this is just a really easy car to daily drive, even in traffic. I drove this car in some bumper to bumper traffic. It still drives really, really well. So I was really happy with uh, with just this using this car as a daily driver, as a commuter car, it's great. And in terms of the fuel efficiency, let's talk about that real quick. Um, the, this car is rated at 21, 28 MPG. And my weeks worth of testing, I averaged around 23 in mixed driving. On the highway, the best I could do is 27.5. So just shy of 28 MPG, which is decent. It's right on target with the EPA's numbers. However, you combine that with a very small 12 and a half gallon gas tank. And the most thing you're gonna, the most you'll do in terms of range is just shy of 300 miles on a full tank. That's highway miles. So you're gonna be filling this thing up constantly. It requires, pre or it recommends premium fuel for maximum performance. You could get away with putting regular in it, but don't put regular in it. It's a performance car. Um, so you're looking at around with $460 a gallon premium gas in my area. You're looking at around $50 to fill it up, 300 miles of range. It's not great. The Volkswagen Golf R that I just recently tested got significantly better range uh, and better MPG from its dual clutch transmission and it had all wheel drive. But overall, it's still a great package. And if you guys are looking for you know something elevated from a Type R, uh, the Type S certainly is worth a look, but if you're also comparing it to an A th or an S3, a CLA 35, or a BMW M2 35i Grand Coupe, this car is definitely more appealing. It is also, in my opinion, the looker of the segment. So after getting a chance to spend a full week with the Ultimate Integra, the first ever Type S, I have to say, when I first drove this car in San Francisco, I was blown away with the overall package, but after spending some more time with this car, living with it on a day-to-day -day basis, taking it on a longer road trip, there is plenty to like about the Integra Type S. And even though I haven't had a chance as of this filming to spend a full week with the Civic Type R, I personally think I may end up going with this model versus the Civic, and there are several reasons for that. First of all, I love the exterior styling of this car more. It is just a far more aggressive looking vehicle. When Acura first introduced the Integra, 
in the A-Spec version two years ago. I personally love the styling. Enthusiasts may have hated the way the Integra looked. A lot of them were mostly upset that this car was not a coupe, but as you guys know, coupes don't necessarily sell, and Acura took all the aspects of the regular Integra and turned the dial up to 11 or 12 and made this car one of the best looking vehicles in the segment, especially if you look at the competitors, the Audi S3, the Mercedes AMG CLA 35, and the horribly ugly BMW M235i Grand Coupe. This car just looks like an athlete compared to those cars, which look a little bit wimpy. And you can thank the body kit, you can thank the wider profile, you can thank the fact that this is lower, and I also love the fact that you have the practicality of a hatchback. In terms of performance, zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds is very quick, because remember, this is a front wheel drive car with a manual transmission. The zero to 60 time basically matches that of an all wheel drive manual Golf R, and the all wheel drive manual GR Corolla is only 0.3 seconds faster. Now I'm gonna have to update um, you guys when I test out a Civic Type R and see if the Type R is actually faster, but in the real world, this car feels quick, but it actually feels even quicker when you daily drive this vehicle in your day-to-day -day driving. But overall, if I had to gripe at the Integra Type S, it's the fact that Acura took away some features that I think are expected for a car wearing an Acura badge. I would love to see this car with a sunroof, with memory seats, uh, cooled seats, and rear seat air vents, and a power passenger seat. Those are some features that you actually do find in the Integra A-Spec. Acura specifically took away the memory driver's seat and the power passenger seat. I don't know why, and the sunroof, I really think they should have kept those features in. It would have helped to justify the price tag of the Integra Type S, which speaking of which, if you guys are looking to get your hands on this vehicle, it starts at around 50,800. Remember, a base Integra is around 31,500. I also wanna point out, this car is now the best-selling vehicle in the premium subcompact or compact space. It outsells vehicles like the A3, the CLA, and the uh, two series Grand Coupe by a wide margin because Acura is on track to sell about 30,000 of these in 2023. They've sold a little over, a little under 20,000 units as of July of this year. And with the momentum that they're building, this is probably going to be selling around 30 to 40,000 units uh, annually when Acura again finishes up the rest of the year. That makes this car a really top selling vehicle and it's very easy to see why. Now my tester here with the Type S uh, and that rear uh, carbon fiber spoiler on the back, this car here stickers for a little over $53,000 with destination charge. That's still a screaming deal. It is more expensive than the German competitors at the base end. However, when you equip the Germans, similarly to this car, the Acura is about $10,000 cheaper than the Mercedes, $5,000 cheaper than the Audi, and about the same price as the BMW. Remember, those are all, all wheel drive and an automatic transmission only. So if you want a manual, this is your only ticket in town. And again, you do have to deal with the front wheel drive aspect. But for those of you who don't need all wheel drive grip, this is definitely one of the most intriguing options in the premium high performance segment. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Acura Integra Type S. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.